everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. You're all familiar with the clerk who tries to push his own particular brand. Usually, he says they're just as good as the brand you ask for, and cheaper, too. Well, sometimes he may be right. Sometimes you may get a bargain, but nine times out of ten, you don't. Take malted milk, for instance. If you accept an imitation of Horlicks, remember that you may be getting a mechanical mixture of skim milk, inferior malt powder, and a lot of ordinary sugar. There's not much economy in that, is there? Not when you can get Horlicks, the original, for only a little more. Horlicks, with its rich, full cream milk, its special processing of finest wheat and malted barley, its precious vitamins and minerals. So remember, when you're buying malted milk, insist on Horlicks. You have a choice of two flavors, either natural or chocolate. And now a word about that photograph of Lum and Abner. Thousands of requests are poured in from all over the country, and there aren't very many pictures left. So if you haven't done so yet, write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger package of Horlicks malted milk and send it to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. You'll receive a photograph right away. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Squire Skimp is now in Chicago attempting to market the hogs for Lum and Abner, which they received from their chain letter. Well, yesterday, however, they received a long-distance telephone call from him advising that there was no market for the hogs at this time, and he would have to keep them there until he could get a good price for them. As a result of the call, the old fellows have had to temporarily abandon the idea they had of, of having a statue made of themselves to present to the citizens of Pine Ridge. As we look in on Lum and Abner today, we find them down at the Jotham Down store. Evidently, they have just received a wire from Squire Skimp. Listen. Uh, read it again, Lum. Well, all it says is, uh, sold hog today. Stop. We'll be home tomorrow. M.K. Skimp. Well, I just can't wait to find out how much you got for him. Well, he said yesterday over the phone that he's going to wait till the market went up before he sold them. I don't believe we could have picked a better man to handle it for us than him, you know. Oh, no, as far as a sharp trader, all right. You'll give him a skin enough for our bounty, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet he's got that hand satchel of his just crammed full of money. I guess we can go ahead and have that statuary made now. Oh, my goodness, I didn't hope you'd forgot about that now. Well, you don't have to go in on it, Abner. I ain't begging you to let me make a hero out of you. If you don't want in it, why just say so? Well, I was talking to Elizabeth about it, Mom, and she don't think much of the idea either. She, she thinks it's just a waste of money. Why, she'd be proud to death of you, Abner. She could go down by there on the square and see you standing there by the side of me and point you out to her friends and say, there stands my husband, Abner. Well, I told her that, but she said it's bad enough to have to look at me around the house out running into a statuary of me every time she went downtown. Well, I don't want to argue with you. You don't want your name to go down in history as Peabody the Great Hog King. I just put one up for me by myself. Well, you go ahead. Just put yourself up there, Lom, and then Elizabeth will see it, and more than likely she want me to have one then. Well, now that sort of changes things up then. If just one of us is going to be on the monument, it won't be no trouble to find one here in the catalog. It'll work all right. Yeah, I know there's a lot of them in there where there's just one man by himself. Yeah, I wish there was one with a hog standing there by him. It'd be just the same. Yeah. And I believe you're going to have to give up the idea of that hog go along. Yeah, it looks like it. I don't know as I just have to have a hog in it, but it'd be nice if I could, you know. Yeah. Save the monument maker all the bother putting one in there. Yeah, sure. See, if they're reading down to the bottom says Lum Eddard's a hog king, that ought to be enough. Oh, Everybody yeah. knows what a hog looks like anyway as I'm putting up a monument of them. They'll look just the same a hundred years from now, more than likely. No, if I you, I'd just be standing there by myself, I believe. Yeah, hand me that catalog there. Let me look at some more of them pictures of monuments. Yeah, yeah, sure, here, yeah. yeah. I don't know where I ought to be sitting down or standing up or riding a horse or what I ought to be doing. Well, if I was you, Lom, wanted to look natural, I believe I'd have myself sitting down. Or asleep, one. Asleep? Yeah. Now, wouldn't that look fine, a hog king asleep? Yeah, that'd be a good name for it, a hog king asleep. Well, I want to have myself doing something, though, fighting or waving a flag or drawing a sword or something like that. Yeah, you about put that thing up down there on the square, and these farmers coming here on a Saturday won't be able to use that hitching rack. Won't be able to get a team within a hundred yards of that monument. Yeah, that's right. Maybe I better be just sitting there. Sort of like this in of Abraham Lincoln's here. Uh, uh, what's that thing there, Lom? What's that? Yeah, that ain't no monument, is it? Why, sure it is, can't you read? Washington's monument. Monument of George Washington. 
Is that what he says down there? Why, sure. You never see a picture of that before? Oh, I reckon not. Well, it don't look a thing like him, does it? No, oh, it looks about like some of Caleb Weehunt's work, don't it? Yeah. He could well you make one like that of me, I'll bet you. I reckon George Washington's had about as much trouble as I'm having trying to find somebody to make one of him. Well, I lie, of course, it ain't none of my business, but Elizabeth says that a body ain't supposed to put up a statue of himself. She says if the folks here in Pine Ridge want the monument of us, why, they'd raise the money and do it themselves. Well, yeah, they do in most places, but these folks around here don't know that. I've had this idea in mind for 15 years, and there ain't been a soul even suggested it to me. Trouble with these folks around here is they don't think about nobody but themselves. Selfishest bunch of people I've ever seen in my life. Well, maybe they don't want you to have one, Mom. Huh? I say maybe that they don't want you to have one up there, or maybe they don't know that you want it. If they know, maybe, why, well, they'd put one up. That's what they do, circulate a petition and get you one. Wait a minute. Now, Granny, you give me an idea there. Abner, you can get out and circulate a petition. What's the matter with you doing that? You mean try to raise enough money to pay for it? Well, I don't particularly care about how much money you get. I'd just like to have as many folks' names on a petition as I could. You can get out and raise what money you can, and I'll pay the difference. Well, I don't mind to carry it around if you want me to. You might find somebody that'll sign it. Well, Grandpap and Cedric will be glad to sign it, I know. If they don't, I'll fire them both. I'll tell them that. Oh, no, I don't think you have no trouble with them, Mom. And I'll sign it, too. I don't see no harm at you. Well, there's four of us already. Or three of us. Or you three. I guess I'm proud we thought of that, Abner. Evelina said the other day she never thought I ought to put one up till somebody asked me. No. She'd be glad to hear this movement's been started. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see here. Get one of these picked out here. Now we're getting someplace now. One, you ought to know that catalog by heart, Mom, as much as you look through it. Yeah, but I can't make up my mind where I want to be Grant or Lincoln or... Wait a minute. There's a feller sitting there that might do if, I... if he didn't have such a worried look on his face. What's he doing there, hitting himself in the chin? No, oh, he's sitting there with his chin resting on his fist. That's called the thinker. He's studying about something. What? I don't know. There's no mind reader. Nothing, I don't reckon. Nothing? Well, I mean, that's just a statuary, Abner. He couldn't think. Yeah. Uh, how about this one over here, Mom? Isn't here that fella throwing that plate or whatever he's doing there? No, that's a discus thrower. Now, how about this side of this one here is the one to get? U.S. Grant. I like that, now Lincoln's a heap better, but... Well, why don't you get it, then? Well, it just looks foolish. Lincoln and Grant is both the same price in the catalog there, and with Grant, I get a horse thrown in the booth. Yeah, that's right. All you get with Lincoln, just that chair, it don't look very comfort to me, now. No, I believe Grant's the best buy. Let's see, that's number 3062, price $6.80 each. Hey, uh, while you're deciding on that, Rom, I believe I'll call up Moe's Moose and see if he'll make a donate to that statue of Well, he ought to. I get all my barber work done down there. Yeah, I'll just remind him of that, too. <laughs> I believe we got him in. <laughs> yes, sir, I'll tell him. Uh-uh. Hello? Moe? Why, this here is Abner Peabody talking. Oh, <laughs> tolerably well. But that ain't what I called up to tell you. Uh, me and Lom's getting up a petition. You're getting it up, not me. Yeah, that's right, it is me. Well, tell him, not me. Uh, uh, hello, Moe. I- I'll have to start all over again. Uh, me and, uh, I mean, uh, just me is getting out a petition to put up a monument of Lom. Lom entered. No, he ain't dead yet. Why, because he's a hog king now. Well, he says he is anyway. Why, a statuary of him. He's going to put it down there in front of Dick Hutterson's store by the watering trough. Yeah, just this side of it. Yeah, he might. <laughs> well, what I called you up for, Mo, that he wants to know if you'll sign a petition and make a donation. You want to know. You want to know. Oh, for goodness sake. Yeah, to help pay for it. Well, fine. <laughs> All right, I'll bring it down there then, Mo. <laughs> All right. Well, much obliged. Goodbye. <laughs> Moses was in favor of it, was he? Yeah, he said he'd sign it, and that we could put him down for 25 cents. Well, good for Moses. <laughs> I know that could depend on him. Giving a quarter, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he said he never had the cash money, but he'd give you a quarter's worth of barber work, and we could trade it out long. Well, fine. Now, there's a man that appreciates what I've did for the community. Fine citizen, that Moses Moose. Yeah, he, he was joshing there. <laughs> said he'd believe it'd do more good if you'd put it out in your garden for a scarecrow. <laughs> Yeah, bound for Moe's to make fun of himself. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Abner, I can see right now this petition is going over with a bang, 100%. Please, I'll just call up that monument maker in there and have him go ahead and order this in a grant right now. Yeah, if you're going to have it, well, you may as well get it and get the use out of it, sure. Yeah. 
I hope he can just rest the order right on through. Now, I'll be sure and have him change your face on it now, Lon. You and that statuary of granite don't look a thing alike. Well, I've cleaned all that time the other for a minute. Central, uh, ring the OK Monument Works, please, Mom. All right, I'll hold it. Yeah, be sure and tell him what you want wrote on that, Lon. Don't uh, want to forget now to have your name put on it after going to all the trouble of putting it up. No, wait a Hello? Mr. Krause? <laughs> this is Lum Edder. I can look at that thing, Clark Krause. I was in there and got a catalog from you a day or two ago to order myself a statuary. Yeah, well, I've picked out the one I want now. If I just give you the catalog number, you can order it all right, can't you? Well, it's number 3062. Yes, sir. Now, I'll send you a picture of myself so you can change the face up to look like me. Yeah. Yeah, and I want you to carve down underneath there, instead of U.S. Grant, put uh, Lum Eddard's Hog King. Lum, well, that don't sound right, Hog King. Wait a minute. What's the matter? I say that don't sound right, Hog King. You never heard anybody say England King. They always say King of England. I think that's right. My sure. Wait a minute. Hello? Uh, Mr. Krause? Uh, change that reading down there. Instead of saying Hog King, say Lum Eddard's King of the Hog. That's right. King of the Hog. Oh, Granny, that ought to make him fitter. <laughs> Lum Edwards. Justice of the Peace. President of the Jotham Down Store. President of the School Board. And King of the Hogs. Don't forget that you can get a big 8x10 autographed picture of Lum and Abner simply by sending in your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger size package of Horlick's malted milk. Lum and Abner want every one of their friends to have one, and they certainly are grand pictures. Just the thing for completing that album of yours or for framing. They show Lum and Abner just as you've always pictured them over the radio. Lum with his famous mustache and his whimsical smile. And lovable old Abner Peabody, known to millions of admiring radio fans as just Abner. Above these character pictures appear the Lum and Abner of real life. If you don't know what the old fellows really look like, now's your chance to find out. I think you'll be surprised. All you have to do, you know, to get one of these pictures is to send in your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger size package of Horlick's malted milk to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. We'll send you one right away. Don't forget, though, we have only a limited quantity of these pictures available. So send in your wrapper as soon as you can. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horley, who bid you all good night and good health.